Today, I'm taking grocery store ingredients and turning them into a piment, which is a wine and a mead hybrid. So let's get started. So I'm gonna say this is like an 80% store-bought mead. The last 20 are things you can't really buy at a store, so we'll talk about them here. But this is a mostly store-bought mead. We're using grape juice because this is a piment. We're using a store-bought grape juice to be exact, which was from Welch's. We are also using some honey that I bought at Walmart, which was the grocery store I used. The yeast is not store-bought from a grocery store. It is found online or a brew shop, so its own thing. And we do use some like oak and some Fermate O, which is like a yeast nutrient. So those things you're not gonna buy at your local grocery store, but the other, the main components of this are buyable at a grocery store. Okay, quick pause, little honesty moment. I started like probably seven or eight things on the day that I started this brew. I am gonna say Welch's grape juice the whole time. And in truth, I use the great value. Um, grape juice, which, is there a difference? I don't really know. The point is, I'm gonna say Welch's the whole time during this video, and my recipe card will even say Welch's, but you can use any store-bought grape juice that you find. Great value, Welch's, whatever else you have in your life. So, here's my apology. I'm sorry for saying it so many times. So let's go figure out how we made this, not Welch's, but Welch's Pyramid. So I was walking through the grocery store. I saw the Welch's grape juice giant bottle and my brain went to a piment because that's a wine and mead hybrid. I also wondered if I could make a good quality piment with this Welch's grape juice. So we went ahead and bought enough to make a gallon. I think I went a little bit over a gallon. It might've been like two bottles. We also found some honey at the grocery store, which is this pure and simple honey. I've used it before for uh, many projects, so I was familiar with it. So here's a recipe card. It has all of the stuff. Some of it, again, you can buy at the grocery store, being the grape juice, the honey. You're not gonna get your yeast, your fermented O, or your oak, which is notably in this, at the grocery store, but that's okay. You can find other ways to source that. So we have our recipe. This mead's really easy to make. And piments are really fun, but they do need lots of age. So at the point that I'm shooting this, this is a five month old mead. We'll talk about that though. So once you have your ingredients, let's walk through the process. You're gonna take your grape juice and you're gonna take your honey and you're gonna mix those up into its own vessel container. With that recipe, I went a little bit over one point, I think three gallons and I used a bucket so that I could rack into a new container and have at least one gallon of mead at the end of it. So you'll notice a bigger vessel and that was intentional. So we started with um, about 1.3 gallons. We took our honey, three and a half pounds of honey with about 128-ish ounces of the grape juice to start. We mixed all of that up and we took a gravity reading, which means we took this little hydrometer, we floated it in a tube, and then we, re uh, we recorded that number that it was floating at. And that helps us to know the starting gravity. And the starting gravity, when we have our final gravity, will allow us to actually calculate out the ABV, or alcohol, by volume. So we took that gravity reading. Very important, get yourself a hydrometer. If you haven't done that yet, go ahead and get one. It'll help you a lot. We mixed together that stuff, took our gravity reading. We're using the Lauvin 71B1122. It is a wine yeast you can buy online at a brew shop if you have one local to you. But this wine yeast will do better than just like a regular bread yeast with this specific recipe. This wine yeast is also really nice. It, it gives its own little flavor profiles to meads and specifically this one does well with piments. So that's why I chose to use it. We got our grape juice, we got our honey, we got our yeast. The yeast nutrient we're using is Fermade O. It's super important to feed your yeast, especially with something like this that had a high starting gravity. The starting gravity for this was 1.124, which means there's a lot of sugar there for that yeast to consume. Because this is a higher ABV brew, or will be after fermentation, we wanted to take and add our yeast nutrient later. So we mixed all our stuff up, added our yeast, we waited 24 hours for the yeast to start 
doing their thing. So they literally started waking up, started budding, going through the process of uh, multiplying essentially and getting ready for fermentation. At the 24 hour mark, we added about four grams of Fermade O. You can use any other yeast nutrient available to you, but please use a yeast nutrient. It'll save you lots of uh, hassle in the future. So we added our yeast nutrient in at the 24 hour mark, and then we let it go. We just put it away, put the vessel away for like three weeks and just forgot about it. We gave it plenty of nutrition, so it was fine. We then, at that three week mark, went ahead and pulled it out of the dark place I had stored it, and we took another gravity reading. This was kind of odd. The Lauvin 71B notably gets up to about 14%, as it's said or listed on the website. This stopped at about 13%, because our starting gravity was 1.124, and our Final gravity, I'll say, or, or gravity after fermentation was 1.024. And you might be asking, how did I know it was done fermenting? Everything, all the yeast, all the junk settled at the bottom and I saw no more bubbling, which means that the activity had stopped. Normally you'll see some things floating around or it will, will not be clear essentially. This started to clear up. So it kind of gave me the sign, hey, this is done fermenting, even though it wasn't. Well, hello, it looks like I'm correcting myself once again. You just found out that this mead stalled, which means that it stopped early. Now talking about this yeast, it was going to probably stall out before it got to 1.000 gravity, but what I noticed is that I didn't put the right amount of Fermate O, or yeast nutrient, into this brew. So on my recipe card that you've seen many times now, it has the correct amount of yeast nutrient I should have added, which is 7.5 grams for this total brew. The four grams that we added wasn't quite enough to feed the yeast, therefore they stopped early. Now we ultimately benefited a little bit from these yeast stopping early because they left some sweetness, but we could have had a problem with some fusels or stressed yeast profile. So feeding the yeast with enough nutrient will fix that possible problem. Later on in the video, I'll talk about if your mead goes dry, what to do to get some sweetness there. But this brew stalled. That's what happened here. That's why it stopped early. And that happens when you don't feed your yeast. So take it from me as someone who did it. Make sure and feed your yeast enough nutrient. All right, I'm gone. Hopefully this is the last time you see me. My yeast did not adhere to their 14% cap. They actually went lower. Therefore, we have a 13% brew and not a 14%, but that's okay. If you make this recipe in my way, your yeast might continue to ferment and they might stop later. They might make it all the way to 1.000. Regardless, you can use this equation to figure out your total alcohol by volume or hop onto a calculator for calculating the ABV and plug in your numbers and you can figure out what ABV brew you have. So after being perplexed why this stopped early, I was like, whatever, it's fine. I racked it into a new container and then I let it set for a little while longer. The fact this ended sweet was actually very helpful. It means that I didn't have to back sweeten it. So that's a, again, a helpful thing for us. I let it set for about a month without doing anything. Just let it age. Let any more yeast, character, stuff fall to the bottom. So if I wanted to rack it again, just let time mellow it. Just let it really do its thing. So at that point, we're about seven weeks, eight weeks-ish old, we went ahead and we added some oak chips. Now specifically, I wanted to use French oak chips, and so I added one half ounce in a little glass, essentially, put some water with it so they started to, you know, acclimate, wake up, but well, wake up, they're not alive, but to uh, soak some, this helps them get their flavor across better. We then took that little vessel of oak chips, of French oak chips, we put it straight into the brew and we let it set for another three or four weeks to really try and get lots of oak character. The chips specifically say normally about two weeks, but I pushed it because I wanted this really strong wine-like character with this honey character there to all be rounded out by the oak as like a big hug. Plus we had sweetness left over, so at this point, we're three months into this brew. I went ahead and pulled that off. I let it set for a whole other month to just rest. Didn't add anything else. I did not add any more honey. I didn't add any more oak. 
I literally just let this thing age to help it, again, continue to mellow and continue to um, be more enjoyable. We then bottled it, and it's been bottled here for about a month and a half, so our timeline is like, we're at, I think, five and a half months, roughly, in that ballpark. It's been sitting in the bottle for, again, about a month and a half. So the whole timeline, I'll put one up here to show you what happened, because I know I did a lot of things. As far as including ingredients, this is very simple. There are some things you will need to do if yours goes dry, meaning that it, it doesn't have sweetness to back it up. If your final gravity is say 1.000, and you go, man, I need some sweetness here, you need to take and back sweeten it. But before you back sweeten, you need to add potassium metabisulfite and potassium sorbate in conjunction or pasteurize the brew. These options will halt the yeast from being able to ferment anymore on anything else you add, therefore allowing you to add sweetness back to this. If you want your wine, or excuse me, mead in this circumstance, to stay dry, don't worry about it. Just do your thing, follow the rest of the steps. In my recipe card, I include a stabilizing point. That's mostly just to keep you safe. You do not want yeast to re-ferment on sugar and then put it into a bottle. So that's that little explanation of why maybe there's a stabilizing step. We're ready to open this thing up. So let's see what it looks like and let's taste it. So now watching me pour that, you probably noticed it's not clear. I often will make a big deal of this and try and really clear up all my brews before tasting them or letting them age. But honestly, I, I let this thing sit for the four months and it hadn't totally cleared. I thought about adding some clearing agents, but I didn't. Could this be clearer? Yes. Will it affect the flavor? Hopefully not. Let's find out. So here's our Welch's grape juice. Pine mint, it definitely has a good, I mean, there's a lot of honey aroma there left over. Some sweetness and definitely some pine mint, um, grape side. It's not like, for, for lack of a better term, not a sophisticated grape smell. It doesn't have like a butteriness. There's like a, like a, ooh, you know, like you get with a nice wine. There is definitely some oak also present, which is really nice. I think that's gonna help to balance this brew. It smells good. I don't really get a lot of booze, which is helpful. Let's taste it. Yeah, that is actually smoother than I thought it would be. The sweetness level is nice because it's not quite cloying. You get enough of that honey character to back up the mead side but you also get enough honey character to continue to pronounce some grape, even if it's a not a super nice grape juice profile. The oak is like adding some tannin in there. It does have a lot of grip. In truth, I am drinking this still very young for what most people say to do with pie mints. I've seen a lot of consensus that like pie mints should not be drank before a year, which is why I think people are gonna start already yelling at me in the comments saying I should have waited to do the tasting at a year. We're almost at six months, you know, like halfway to a year, right? I can imagine this is going to get so much cleaner over time. All of the flavor profiles here are um, rather young and I've had a lot of mead, so I, it's easy for me to, to, to notice that here, but I get a young grape taste with a little bit of alcohol presence in there that kind of distracts. The oak is there, but there's just, it's, it's not quite strong enough in the profile to help balance things out. The honey is there. The honey will continue to shine more over time too though. That's one thing I've noticed. Overall, really not a bad brew because I can see the promise in this thing. If I'm giving it a rating at this point, well, you know, six months in, it is a six out of 10. But if you give this another six months, yeah, I think it's gonna be a 10 out of 10 for sure. Just more time to meld and to chill out. This is my challenge to you. Go and buy for your own experience in trying a pie mint if you've never done it before, or your own experience in using a grape juice that might not be as nice. Go find some Welch's grape juice or any other sort of grape juice around you. Normally these are like Concord grapes if I remember correctly. So 
Concord grapes aren't necessarily anything fancy, but it gives you that experience. Ugh, man. Nah, I'm just teasing y'all. That'd be funny though. Part of this thing for me is that I now have experience to say, ooh, I've tasted this before. I know this is Concord grape. So I can be on lookout for those things. It's helping develop my palate. We also used mostly stuff from the grocery store other than yeast and oak and fermento. So this has been a grocery store pie mint for the most part. Uh, again, please don't yell at me because I understand I'm not using every element from the grocery store, but it's a lot of fun and I think you should try it. So let me know what you think. Have you done this before? If not, let me know what you want to see on the channel, of course, and just leave a comment below. I'm curious to see. I actually done the same thing with another Welch's grape juice with a white grape juice. Then that video will be out eventually. I don't know when, but you can check that out on the channel when that comes out. And then um, of course, go try to make this. So thank you for watching. Thank you for spending your time here. Go make some mead specifically <laughs> and uh, maybe even a pie mint if you want to get real specific. So thanks for watching. See you next time. Cheers. Yes.